Hi there, I'm Susie Pogue and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my watercolor art practice and this is kind of going to be like a studio vlog I guess, um, just a discussion of things that I'm doing, things that I'm thinking about and um, hoping to get some interaction and feedback and community started around what I guess is really um, a modern art artist life. You know, things have really changed with social media, which is why I'm here <laughs> talking to you guys today because, you know, I'm stuck inside. I'm an artist. I work alone. And so this is a way for me to create a community and to communicate with people about my artistic intent. As you can see, it's spring. This is some of the beautiful lily of the valley that I found in my garden. They're really invasive and a pest, but they're also pretty and I haven't been able to get rid of them yet, so I might as well enjoy them. They smell lovely. And this was sort of a spring Jean Larson inspired semi-abstract landscape that I did spontaneously the other day. I really enjoyed using these pigments together. I recently got something called cobalt blue violet and so the majority of the sky is that with a little bit of shadow violet just to I guess give it some depth around the top area and then this is just straight cascade green from Daniel Smith and I believe I used some green gold and um, this might have some nickel azo in it just a little bit but I then tried to bring this down again and just mix these colors so there's just a little bit of cascade green and a lot of this cobalt blue violet which doesn't granulate in the same way as typical cobalts um, I think if I looked at the pigment right I think it might be ultramarine mixed with something and so you can see here I've got some pretty blooms but I wouldn't really say that it's heavily granulating and I think I did some tests on it here it is so it does granulate and I, like what the undertone is actually um, kind of pinky there it is again but compared to like the pimenite or the jadeite, which these are heavily granulating, you know, I wouldn't use this for its granulation. Let's put it that way. And since I'm flipping through here, this is what I do typically when I get a brand new paint. So I got pimenite recently with the cobalt blue violet. And so I just do a graded wash and I chose six colors to, to work with, so in this case I've got Nicolazzo yellow mixed with the pyrenite on the page, and then if I jump down one row, this is it mixed in the palette. So this is ultramarine blue with pyrenite mixed on the page, and this is mixed in the palette. This is Quinn red mixed on the page, and this is mixed on the palette. This is Quinn Burnt Orange, uh, Sap Green, and Carbazole Violet. So I'm just doing sort of my version of a primary secondary and looking at how it mixes and what happens. Then what I did is try to do a flat wash and you know this is not even I wouldn't really consider using this for that purpose what you're getting is texture like major texture and you know unpredictability of how the color is going to flow out so this is not good for that and I think you see it you know you can see where I fiddled to try and get it flat and I did that really quickly like it's just not good for that purpose but I do think this, I did just a wash of plain water and then added the pigment in 
to see how it flows and it doesn't um, shoot out like a quin would but it does kind of leave the sediment where you put it and then this beautiful blush with a hint of violet comes out which is you know just it's almost, I don't know it's a really beautiful color and a lot of different hues come out of it so I decided to do this whole tree and you know it gets quite reddish um, it has some dark darks but it also has some beautiful light tones so it would make a great paint for a monochromatic piece I like this paint overall and so I put a lot of time into doing this and I think it'll be great reference for the future um, on uh, particularly like mixing I think is quite interesting I really like what's happening in here I don't super love it with the yellow I think because this is you know towards violet and then when you're mixing it with a orangey yellow I'm just getting mud so that is what I've been up to there um, the other thing that I had started was just working on clouds and different ways to negative paint them and look at the depth of clouds and some of the colors that we can use for clouds. So let me just grab the other two examples. If you hear thumping, that's my kiddo. I don't know if I can get all of these on there. Let me just check and see that you can see that. Yeah, you can, okay. So these were all done on rough paper. They all have more than one layer on them and I've tried different things with each one of them. And I think I learned a ton about clouds. I don't think I learned everything. I think I could keep going. And really it was just to use this beautiful Arsh rough paper. I've never had a chance to use this paper before and it just makes some stunning skies. So I'm gonna have to do like a really sky filled landscape with it. And what I'm kind of proud of is I went out and I got a glass plate to start mixing my own colors. There are some mixes that I just really like and I go to often and so why don't I just mix my own and put it in my own half pan. Easy to do. And so this is actually the color here that I mixed. It is a mix of purpurite and ultramarine turquoise, both by Daniel Smith. It's heavy on the purpurite and light on the ultramarine turquoise because it that's a powerful paint. There's a phthalo blue in it and it just goes poof. So um, purpurite being mineral based, it needed more of that and less of the other. But it made some really this is one paint. <laughs> so what I did was I actually took my really crappy plastic palette knife and when I was done making the paint and had scraped it in, I just made this painting to kind of see what the paint could do in its mass tone and then mid-tone and undertone. So the mass tone is really dark, like darker than both purpurite and darker than ultramarine turquoise so that's a surprise I would say it almost goes to black here's another example this is just from here and I love it like the granulation from the purple is a dark purple and then you have the undertone of the turquoise 
and the mass tone of the dark indigo like this is just really cool so I'm excited about the potential for this paint and I would really like to do this again in the future um, you can see here too as a third layer to kind of darken up the top I might bring it down and make this look like night clouds I've added it up here and it just I mean it has a really great effect so the only thing I would say is I probably wouldn't layer over it because of how granulating it is I think you want to put it down and let it do its magic and step away you are not gonna see all the effects from this paint until it is dried so you really have to leave it don't fiddle let it do its magic and you're gonna get amazing granulation and colors out of it so I'm trying to see if I can show you that purple so if you want to mix it yourself I highly recommend it I think it's super cool and I'd love to see what you guys are up to so that's about it for now um, the next thing that I'm going to be working on is I want to do a much more standardized version of this swatch card system. Um, right now it's on student grade paper, which I really do not like, and it doesn't tell me a lot of information. So I will probably be filming that and sharing my process with you. So. Uh, look forward to that coming out next and I will also share with you my painting projects and any other art related stuff that I'm up to so that's all for now I hope you have a wonderful day and paint your hearts out